In this series, I'll be addressing cybersecurity with Groove devices. In this video, we'll focus on how to use self-signed certificates with this Groove Rio. Specifically, I'll be using the default self-signed certificate that got generated on this device before it even shipped out of the Opto factory. In other videos in this series, I'll go over custom self-signed certificates. These can use any host name that you want, not just the factory default host name. In another video, I'll address certificate authorities, or CAs, both public and private. Now, each of these approaches is essentially going to do the same thing, let you create a verified connection to your device, but which one you use is going to depend on your particular application, so we're going to make sure that we cover everything. Now, while I'm going to be doing this on a Groove Rio MM1, you should know that the process is essentially the same on every Groove Rio module, as well as on our Groove Epic series, as well as other Groove devices that we may release in the future. Now, something to know about these Groove devices is that you can only connect to them over HTTPS. That means that every connection is both secure and encrypted. One side effect of using HTTPS instead of the insecure HTTP is that you will need to configure your certificates if you want to be able to verify this connection. When you don't do that, you'll first see something like this. This is the, my first time connecting to this device, so I'm getting this warning saying my connection is not private. If you're using Firefox instead of Chrome, you may see something like this, where it says, warning, potential security risk ahead. Now, this doesn't mean that it's actually an insecure connection. It means that it is a secure connection. You can see up in the URL that I am using HTTPS, but I'm not able to verify that connection, so my computer is giving me a warning. We can see why that is by selecting not secure up here next to the URL. When I select that, we'll see it says your connection to this side is not secure, and that's because the certificate is not valid. If we click that, we can see a bit more detail about the certificate itself. We can see here it is issued to this device, this default hostname that you can see that I'm trying to visit right here, that's good, but it's also issued by that same certificate site. So that's where that self-signed certificate comes from. If you try to visit something like Amazon Web Services or Google or your bank, you won't get this, your connection is not private warning, because it is able to verify who issued that certificate. That's because your system comes with a lot of certificate authorities pre-installed in its trusted root certification store. In this case, this Opto device isn't in that trusted root store. So what I need to do is install my certificate into that trusted root store and get that secure connection. That's the process I'm going to go over in this video. But before I get into the nitty gritty of which files you need, where to get them, and how to install them onto your system, let's have a look at what's actually happening in the background. To do that, I'll bring open this blog post here on our Opto blog. It's Groove Epic Security Series, Part 5, Encryption and Certificates. While it does say Groove Epic, again, this process applies for all Groove Series devices. We'll have a link for this in the description below if you want to take a deeper dive for yourself, or you can find it by going to blog.opto22.com and just search for certificates and this post will show up. You'll also notice while we're here that our blog site is a secure connection. We've got this grey lock up here in the top left, it doesn't say not secure. If I click that, we can see that it says the connection is secure, and if I click that, we can see that it says my certificate is valid. If I click that, we can see why. It's issued to blog.opto22.com, but it's issued by this Cloudflare CA or Certificate Authority. This is already installed in my system and probably is on yours too. So if you come to this site, you immediately get in and you have a secure connection. We want to get the same secure lock just using our self-signed certificate instead of this Certificate Authority. So with that said, you can see here this blog post goes over a bit of the history of security, for example, what is TLS or transport layer security, and SSL or secure sockets layer. You can feel free to dig into this in your own time. In this video, we'll just focus on this infographic here. Let's pull that open in a new tab and zoom in so that we can see what's happening here. We've already gone through the first part of this process, where our browser has reached out and requested a secure connection with our web server, this Groove Rio. Then the web server has responded with its certificate info and public key. That's how we were able to see the issued to and issued by. But we get stuck on step C, where the browser tries to independently verify the certificate against its trusted root store. So it wasn't able to continue the process, but we'll go through it anyway. 
If it was able to verify, it would have automatically sent that one-time session key encrypted with the server's public key. Then the web server responds with the decrypted session key using its own private key, and we get that padlock saying that a secure connection is established. Now, we still need to get to the web server to download this self-signed certificate. So what we can do is we can actually manually send an exception and just say, hey, this one time, I'm here, I as the user know I can trust this server, so I want you to go ahead and connect anyway. Let's see what that looks like. If I come back to my groove and select advanced, you can see I have the option to proceed anyway. This may be unsafe if I didn't know what server I was connecting to, but I know I'm in the right place, so I'll go ahead and proceed. This will drop me straight into my login page. I do still have to put my credentials in that I created when I first started up the device, and I'll go ahead and click sign in. Now I do have a secure connection to my device. It's HTTPS, I've provided my credentials, and I am able to access all the services here. It does still say not secure because it still can't verify that certificate, but trust that it's a secure connection over HTTPS. Now let's have a look at the certificate itself. You can find that under security and server SSL. Here, we have a lot of options with our certificate. Let's take a look at the decoded certificate right here. You can see that the issuer of this certificate is that default hostname, and the subject is this common name, that same hostname. There's no other details here because it's just the default certificate. It, I haven't had the opportunity to put any further details in, and that's something that we'll cover when we do custom self-signed certificates. Now that we know that that's what our certificate looks like, let's go back and go over the other options here. Today, we'll just be downloading the public certificate. But if you were using a certificate authority service, whether it's through your IT team or something that you do paid online or even something custom that you create yourself, you would need to download the private key and the certificate signing request, or CSR. You provide these two files to your CA, and then they sign those give you back a now signed certificate, and you would upload that into your device, and that's how you would use a certificate authority. You can also create a new certificate, and that's when we'll do the custom self-signed certificates, but today we just need to do the download public certificate. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll select that, and we'll see I have the option to save it as cert.pem. That doesn't really describe very much though. I don't know which device this applies to or that it is in fact the public certificate. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to name it after this device hostname. So opto 04-91-74. Also, I may have multiple files associated with this one hostname. So a good tip is to add a little extra detail in here. For example, I'll do underscore public cert. You can do something like PC, or anything else that's meaningful to you. The important thing is that you keep track of what each file does. If you have multiple devices, or you are using multiple files for this device, it can get confusing really quickly, so I recommend using meaningful file names right from the beginning. I'll go ahead and click Save, and we'll see I'm able to download this certificate.pem. Now that I've got this file right here, I want to be able to install it into my Windows Trusted Store. You can also install it just into your Chrome certificates or into your Firefox certificates or anywhere else you need, but I'm gonna put it in the system so that I can securely connect from pretty much any source. So I'm gonna log out of my device and go ahead and do that. I'll start by going user and select sign out. Now we need to install the certificate. We do that through what's called the Microsoft Management Console. To bring that open, just select start and type in run, R-U-N. That will open this run app that you can see on my screen now. To open MMC or Microsoft Management Console, just type in MMC and click OK. Here I'm seeing a pop-up that says, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And I'm going to say yes. The reason you are asked this is because once you're in the Microsoft Management Console, you have access to all your certificate authorities as well as a lot of other admin privileges. So you want to be careful poking around in here, and you do need to be an admin to get to it. So it's just trying to make sure that you're safe. Let's bring that console over to my screen now. We can see here, as soon as I launch it, I actually don't see any certificates right now. That's because I need to add the snap-in to this session. I'll come up to the top left and click Add Remove Snap-in. Here, I get a pop-up that gives me all the options I have available here. 
I just want certificates, so I'll select that and click Add. This will give me another pop-in that asks me where I want to manage certificates for. Just the user I'm logged into, I may have a service account, or I may want to do it for all users on this computer. I want anyone that logs in here to be able to securely connect to this device, so I'll go ahead and select Computer Account and click Next. I am doing this for my local computer, so I can go ahead and click Finish. Now you can see it's added as my selected snap-ins for this local computer. Now I can click OK, and we'll see, there we go, there are our certificates. If I select that, we can see all the different certificate stores that I have available to me. I want to be using these trusted root certification authorities, so I'll double-click that, and finally, double-click certificates. You can see here are all the different certificate authorities that I already have on my device. There may be some familiar to you like DigiCert or GlobalSign or GoDaddy. You can also see that we have an Opto22CA that we use to connect to devices in this building. But we'll notice that I don't have my Opto device here, my Opto0471 or <laughs> 049174. So I'll need to add that. To do that, just right click on certificates, hover over all tasks, and click Import. This will give me a new pop-up interface where I can just select Next to add it to this local machine and browse to my file. As soon as I click Browse to my files, you'll see that I am in the same folder, but no items match my search. The reason for this is that Windows is expecting my certificates to be .cer or .crt file format, but mine is .pem. But no worries, that's an easy fix. We'll just select that come down to the bottom and click All Files. As soon as I do that, we'll see my file shows up. This opto 049174 public certpem The PEM file format is acceptable, it's just not what Windows expects by default. Now that I've got that selected, I'll click Open and click Next. I am adding them to this Trusted Root Certification Authorities, and when I click Next, I have the opportunity to verify all of my settings. The Trusted Root Store, and the correct.pem file. Now I'll go ahead and click finish and I get a nice pop-up saying that the import was successful and if I click OK, there we go. We can see my self-signed certificate has successfully been imported and is now in my trusted root store. That's awesome. So now I can go ahead and close the management console. I'm not going to be using that again in this video. You do get a pop-up offering to save these settings but there's no need for that. You can just add the snap in next time you need to access these. So I'll click no and we'll come back to my device. We'll notice as soon as I get back here, the not secure is still there. Even if I hit refresh, yep, it still says not secure. I could even open this in a new tab, still says not secure. The reason is because Chrome has remembered that I have already made an exception for this device and it's holding on to that. Even if I were to click X in the top right and close this browser instance, Chrome leaves a lot of hang up processes in the background even after it's closed. So instead of just hitting the X, I'm actually going to come into my task manager and kill the process entirely. This will make sure nothing's open in the background and Chrome will be able to start up with a completely fresh slate. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll click End Task. I've completely killed my Chrome and I'll need to bring it open again. So I'll click Chrome, select my developer account, and we'll load right back in. You'll notice that because I didn't shut it down correctly, I do have the opportunity to restore here. And right away, as soon as I've opened it up again, we do have that secure up in the top left. If I click that, you'll see it says connection is secure, just like you will see in that uh, blog that I showed you earlier. And when I select that, we'll see it says my connection is secure and my certificate is valid. If I click certificate is valid, you can see it's still the same self-signed certificate. It's just now it's installed, it's able to verify against that trusted root store. So we've met our goal for the video. I'll go ahead and click OK and log in with those same admin credentials I did earlier. However, this time when I log in, I am prompted to save my password. This means that it will autofill, and it won't do this when it can't verify the connection. So that's another benefit of using certificates correctly. If you have any questions, you can come to our forums at forums.opto22.com. And please subscribe to check out our other videos if you're interested in doing a custom self-signed certificate that could have any host name that you can change up here. We'll also be discussing certificate authorities or CAs in a bit more depth and show you how you can use those as well. Thanks for watching.